This is properties of exponents part three, and we're gonna be looking at two different properties of exponents. The first is the power of a product property, which says if you're trying to find the power of a multiplication problem or product, you can find the power of each individual factor and then multiply to get your final answer. So in this case, three times two to the fifth power can be done by doing three to the fifth power and two to the fifth power and multiplying those answers together to get your final answer. The power of a quotient property says that if you're trying to find the power of a division problem or a quotient, you can find the power of your numerator, the power of your denominator, and then divide to get your final answer. So three divided by two to the fifth power can be done by finding three to the fifth power, my numerator, two to the fifth power, my denominator, and then dividing those answers to get our final answer. These properties are extremely useful when we have problems that have variables in them. Because if we don't know the value of a variable, we can't usually go much farther unless we have a property or a rule that we know applies to all exponent problems. So here we're being asked to simplify each expression and write our answer using only positive exponents. So most of these problems I wouldn't be able to do because I don't know the value of the variables in them. But we're going to use our properties to simplify them. So in this case, I have negative one and a half times y all to the second power. I don't know the value of y, but I know that I can square each individual factor here. So negative 1.5 can be squared and y can be squared. I can do negative 1.5 squared. Negative 1.5 times negative 1.5 gives me 2.25. But y squared, I can't simplify any further because I don't know the value of y. So there is our final simplified answer. In this case, my numerator would be a to the third power. My denominator is negative 10 to the third power. The numerator I can't simplify, but this guy I can. Negative 10 times negative 10 is 100 times another negative 10 is negative 1,000. So here is my simplified answer. In this case, I've got two factors in my numerator, so they're both going to be to the fourth power, and my denominator will be to the fourth power. Three to the fourth power I can simplify, it's 81. D to the fourth power I cannot because I don't know the value of D. Two to the fourth power is 16. There is my simplified answer. In this case, my exponent is negative five, so I have two to the negative fifth power, x to the negative fifth power, and in my denominator, three to the negative fifth power. Now I'm only allowed to do problems with positive exponents. So in order to turn these into positive exponents, I have to find the reciprocal of each of these individual factors. So basically they're going to flip from the numerator to the denominator or the denominator to the numerator. So to make these positive, I'm just going to flip my entire numerator and denominator. Now three to the fifth power will give me 243, two to the fifth power will give me 32, and x to the fifth power can't be simplified because I don't know the value of x. So there is my simplified answer. In this problem, I'm looking at a cylinder and they want me to find different representations for the volume of the cylinder. So in order to do this, I had to refresh my memory on the volume of a cylinder. And if you don't remember the formula, you can always look it up. But to find the volume of any cylinder, we're doing pi times r squared, where r is the radius, times h, which is the height of the cylinder. In this particular cylinder that we're given, the radius is half the value of the height, or h divided by 2. So to find the volume of the cylinder we're talking about in our problem, Instead of r, I substituted h divided by 2. Since the radius is being squared, I squared both my numerator and denominator. In this case, I have pi times h squared times h, which will become pi h to the third. And in the denominator, I have 2 squared, which will become 4. So this is a simplified value for the volume of this cylinder. So we've got six other representations and we want to decide if any of these also work. 
Well, one of them automatically off the bat exactly matches the answer we got. So I know that this one is going to work. So let's try this guy right up here. Two times pi times r to the third power. This person still has the r in there. And remember, the r in our cylinder is h divided by two. So let's try putting that in this formula and see if it will match ours, if it'll actually work. So two times pi times, instead of r, h over two to the third power. Well, this is gonna become two times pi times h to the third over two to the third power, which in turn will become two times pi times h to the third over eight. And we can actually simplify two eighths into one fourth. So pi h to the third over four. I'm just leaving the one off, it's a ghost one, I don't need it. And it matches ours exactly. So this formula will also work. Let's try this next one here. So the next one is pi times h to the third power times two to the negative second power, which is the same as doing one over two squared. So pi times h to the third times one is gonna give us pi times h to the third, two squared is gonna be four, and it exactly matches our answer, so this one also works. In this case, I've got pi times h times four to the negative one, or one fourth. This will give me pi times h over four. This is not gonna work because I need h to the third power. So this one's automatically out. This one's gonna be out also, because it looks exactly like ours, except the powers differ. I wanna have to the third, this has squared, so this one's not gonna work. This guy also looks identical to mine, except for the denominator, which is different. And since there's no simplifying to really do here, and the denominators don't match, this one is also not going to work. Let's look at one more problem with scientific notation. Scientific notation uses powers to take large or small numbers and write them in a more concise way. So here we have a jellyfish that emits 1.25 times 10 to the eighth particles of light or photons in 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. And they wanna know how many photons does the jellyfish emit each second, so per second. So we wanna write our answer in scientific notation and standard form. So in this case, the jellyfish emits 1.25 times 10 to the eighth photons in 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. And we wanna know how much it's emitting per second. So we want this down to one second. So we're actually going to be dividing by this 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth to get this. And whatever I do to the uh, denominator, I'm gonna also do to my numerator. So the numbers themselves I can divide. 1.25 divided by 6.25 is going to leave us with 0 0.2 and my powers when I divide them remember I'm going to actually subtract the exponents so 8 minus negative 4 will give me 10 to the 12th power so this would be my answer except this problem is no longer in scientific notation in order for a number to be in scientific notation this first number has to be between 1 and 10 so I actually want to change it to two by moving the decimal over one, which means it's now going to be times 10 to the 11th. And this is photons per second. Now, if I want to write this guy in standard regular form, 10 to the 11th power means I'm multiplying by 10 11 times. And every time I multiply by 10, I'm adding a zero. So I'm going to have to add 11 zeros here. Five, six, seven, eight. So this would be our standard form. 